be, I mean, we are in the presence of a celebrity right now. This is we like, are. She did the Super Bowl commercial with Bill Murray and G. Uh, drop. That's it right yep. there. This is it. This is the one that started it all. You planned that. <laughs> no, I did it, but yeah, that's cool. C- could we oh. be uh, in line for something funny to come out of the mouth? It just might happen. <laughs> what, a, yeah. what a little cute. She's the best. <laughs> Everyone deserves to feel their best. Everyone deserves to move their best and not have pain. I'm a little upset that Ben got like two inches taller because <laughs> he's already tall, dark, and handsome enough. Culture is something we think about like all the time at Streakies. You know, we're all coming from different cultures. Our look, comments have exploded through the roof. So there you go. Good afternoon. It's Lancaster Connects. My name is Ben McClure. I am broadcasting live from my basement office today. Uh, today was a little bit of a mess in the morning. I, you know, forgot my laptop bag here at the house. I went to the store. There were a bunch of other things going on, so I came back home, home base. Um, flying solo today. Uh, Jeff, uh, partner in crime here at Lancaster Connects and Gardner's Mattress and More, where we normally broadcast the show. Uh, he is uh, traveling out of town today to visit family. Uh, we hope that he has a safe and successful trip uh, where he's going. So looking forward to uh, having him back next week for the show. Uh, we've got a great show planned today. Really a first of her kind guest um, or first of our kind, I guess, guest. Um, we're really excited to have uh, them on today. And it's actually a score show. So we've got two guests uh, live in the same place. And um, SCORE is, uh, of course, an organization right here in Lancaster that helps uh, individuals, nonprofits, and other uh, business organizations uh, getting their business either off the ground, getting them funded, uh, getting them the assistance they need to take their business to the next level. So this is maybe our fourth or fifth SCORE-based show. And uh, actually, one of our uh, our score representative, it's her second Lancaster Connect show. So again, we're really excited to talk to them. We'll bring them on in just a moment. Uh, you can watch this show various places. Some of you watch on Facebook, some watch on YouTube, both Lancaster Connects uh, and the Gardener's Mattress and More Facebook and YouTube channels is where we broadcast live. Of course, you can go to LancasterConnects.com and uh, as Chris has it there, producer Chris has it there on the screen, uh, slash episodes. It's on the top of the page, Lancaster Connects, uh, the episodes page. You can watch all previous 127 episodes. I think we're on 128 now, or maybe this is 127. I don't know. (laughs) We're a lot of shows. Um, So uh, a lot of great guests. Again, we we highlight great people doing great things in Lancaster County. Um, Sometimes, again, that's nonprofits, charitable organizations, businesses, or just really, really fun and interesting people like today's guest. Um, So uh, we'd love for you to subscribe or give us a like on Facebook, go to the YouTube channel, give us, uh, you know, hit the subscribe button. Uh, The more people we have subscribing and following and watching uh, and sharing our content, the more impact we can make in our community. Uh, So it's pretty much it. I think, uh, you know, without further ado, who wants to hear me ramble on, right? Let's bring our guest on. Uh, like I said, uh, we've got Keisha Finney uh, right there on the left of your screen and Beverly Duty representing SCORE. How are you both today? Great. Great. Good. Yeah, awesome. we're great. Ready to go. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm ready to go too. I, Keisha, I, I can't wait to dig into your story. When I say first of our kind guest, like you're an artist. I think you're the first artist we've ever had on Lancaster Connects. Wow, it's an honor then. I'm, <laughs> I'm humbled to, to be the first. There you go. There you go. Well, cool. So um, I, I, we're just going to dig right in. Um, you know, we're going to have your art on the screen. Uh, we'll talk about your art. But like f- for you, uh, where did your passion for art start? Like where did it come from? Like where did when did you realize that you had a talent and a passion for art? And, you know, kind of what did that look like? So for me, I felt like I really had the passion for art since I had my very first art class in kindergarten, as cool. cliche as it sounds. But yeah, it's it's the first time I remember how impactful my art class was and and where actually one of my murals lives now. And then to having a teacher who I had in high school as well. So it was, yeah, 
it all started with being in the school setting and and having my very first art class. And where where did you go to school? At Ross Elementary here in Lancaster. So so you were able to go back and and you painted a a, a mural in the in the elementary school. So it's not in the school. It's actually outside. Um, oh. It was one of the COVID murals that they put out um, a call for in 2020. That's so and cool. Yeah. So it's cool for me to drive by it almost every day and see it. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's it's unfortunate. Like a lot of school programs, what they cut first are the arts, you know, be that music, uh, art, you know, painting, drawing, sculpture, you know. Uh, unfortunately, those are some of the programs that get cut first when there's, you know, budget cuts and whatnot. But um, man, th those programs, though, like they shape us. Um, I, I was involved in music my whole life, you know, so choirs and choruses and, and band. And like, I feel like those experiences shape my life. And it uh, it seems like art did the same same for you and has, has turned it into a career for you. So that's that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely sad hearing how art was getting cut from from school just because how big of an impact it did have for me. So it was definitely hard to hear, but also one of the reasons why I do so much work in the community, too. That's great. That's great. So you you mentioned um, the elementary school and then you you mentioned a high school teacher. Did you want to give a high school teacher a shout out? That, that... Yes. Uh, his name is Matthew Lawrence. He's okay. amazing. Um, yeah. And we actually do events together now and I even sit. Oh with him under his tent. So like, yeah, it's like every artist's dream to be working with their artists. Their, wow. Their that's from school. That's so cool. So is uh, McCaskey, McCaskey yep. High School. Mm -hmm. That's really, really cool, man. Teachers make all the difference. They do. They do. So cool. So cool. So uh, what, what prompted you then to become an artist professionally? Ah, uh, so it, it was a very long journey. Um, I did art all throughout my years in grade school. Um, but what really um, ignited, I guess, that I could be an artist full time was when I started working back at AC Moore, actually, as a part time job. And <clears throat> I started uh, just getting back into art and doing doing more experimenting. And then I found out that painting was something that I was really good at. And then social media became a thing mm -hmm. and I started posting my work on there and I got a lot of great feedback from strangers that I didn't know. So that's wow. what made me feel like I could do it full time. And I've seen artists online being able to do it full time. So I was like, this is very tangible if I can see other people doing it. That's cool. That's cool. So I know we were talking pre-show and I've, I've uh, been on your website and, and poked around and, and learned more about your story, but I know there was a moment in time that really kind of defined uh, or, or kind of put you on the path of, of being an artist full time. Would you like to share about that? Yeah. So that the picture that you just showed with the shirt that I was wearing, one of my paintings called The Journey, that was actually uh, one of the first paintings that I created after going through a tragic car accident where I oh was lucky enough to be alive. And that kind of made me kind of find my purpose and take art more seriously. Wow. Wow. So that, uh, I can't really see it, but the, the painting that's on your shirt, is that what the painting is on the, on the picture there or no? Um, no, it's actually just similar color schemes and, okay. uh, just the style of my work that is seen throughout all of my pieces. Yeah. But that the piece that's on my shirt was one that I did before I did this mural. Okay. Okay. And is that the mural that's outside of the school? Yep. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> we got to see it. So, uh, and I know, I know there was another moment, um, and and we talked about it uh, pre-show. Uh, the um, there was a mural that you painted. Um, you know, it had George Floyd on it and other uh, people on it. Um, can you talk about that and how that propelled your artistic journey? Yeah. So. Um... When COVID happened, which was probably, um, it was it was in the midst of doing that mural. We had 10 days to do that mural. And then after the mural was shown to the city and put up, a few days later, um, the killing of George Floyd happened. And then that was the first time in Lancaster that I've ever seen protesting at all in my life. And it was the first time actually being a part of it. Um, so I, I briefly talked to the Lancaster Public Art um, president who was at the time 
and we were um, downtown at an event that was in the art college um, grass area that's outside next to the yeah. police station. And they had um, like boards up where people can draw and write words and things like that. So we were um, just throwing around ideas and decided that we should do a mural. And we ended up doing a mural on the next day um, on a big piece of plywood with a stand. And I um, reached out to a few local um, artists of color as well to help me um, collaborate and do this piece together. Um, so that was the ampersand that's showing up in the video there as well that we did right after that. But um, mm -hmm. when we did the George Floyd mural, we were doing that in conjunction when everybody was protesting in the streets. So it was a very powerful day. I was doing interviews that I've never done before. Um, like I was in the newspaper and then like after that, everybody knew who I was. So it was it was kind of like a hard moment to, to be living in at the time, but also very powerful for art and the message that I was putting across with the work that we did. Wow, so um, to kind of go back to the, the piece itself that you did, you created that with other people mm -hmm. and uh, you did it all in one day? Yes, in the blazing sun. <laughs> That's incredible. And yes. how how big is it? You said it's I want to say so. it's probably at least eight foot wide, and now it has a big frame that my friend built on the outside of it. Um, so it's maybe like nine feet, and it's really big. So we were after um, we finished the mural, we started um, asking other businesses if they wanted to host it in their windows, okay. just so it could still be seen by the community. So we were traveling it for like a year after that, and then it landed at Christmas Attics where it lives now. Okay. So you can see okay. it inside of Christmas Attics when they have events in there. Wow, okay, that's really, really cool. So you, um, I don't know if you saw the comment that came through, you've got a fan, <laughs> Kathleen <laughs> Sullivan, we're talking about, uh, we were talking about the shirt. She she wears the shirt, in fact, I think- Yep, there's, there's her picture Christmas with the shirt on right there. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, Kathleen. Um, that that's that's really cool and I, I love that the picture has the shirt on yes <laughs> that's cool that's cool so uh from there um your your artistic journey really just took off like you said you were doing interviews you were you know, kind of on the artist map i guess yes. <laughs> yeah so so what happened next um so after that um things started to open up slowly with COVID. So I had to go back to my part-time job, um, which was a total different mindset than what I was in previously because I had a bunch of time to do art. Um, but eventually I had to take the leap and put in my two weeks notice and I was able to stop working in July of 2021. And that, that was when I went full-time as an artist. And then that following month, I had a solo exhibit um, with all of my work and previous um, past works that I did, as well as some a few new pieces. Just because of the George Floyd mural, I had a big following. So like all these yeah. people never seen my work before. So I was like, yeah. I'm just going to do a show with all the old stuff and try to sell it. And it was actually the first time I do my, my time doing a solo show. And it was it was really great. That's I mean, so there's so much to unpack. <laughs> we yeah. have a short period of time, but like, so COVID happened and mm -hmm. you were basically like unemployed because you couldn't, couldn't work. Right. Yeah. So you had this like large chunk of time and you decided to take that time and be creative with it. Yes. Create artwork, start kind of defining the type of artwork and, and, um, and, and, and then you did this mural. Mm -hmm. And now you realized, hey, I've got something here. Um, I can turn this into like you can turn your passion into a career. Mm -hmm. And then you were able to to uh, quit your part time job. That's so I mean, I love that story. It's so cool. And I mean, COVID was strange and, and difficult for, for a lot of reasons. But yeah, um, it was really kind of a, a moment that you saw and took an opportunity the the free time and and did something with it. I, I think that's great. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. And previously, um, I already had had a score mentor at the time because where my part-time job was the owner of the salon that I worked at, she had a score mentor. So she told me to get one. Um, so that's how I met Beverly because I needed, um, certain documentation or an, an EIN numbers that I needed for an event. Um, so mm -hmm. I reached out to score and they were able to help me, um, walk through that process. Well, that's a great segue because I was I was wondering, you know, a lot of times um, 
you know, I think of SCORE, you know, helping nonprofits, organizations, um, businesses like ours, we use SCORE mm -hmm. 13 or 14 years ago. Um, but as an artist, you're, you're, a bit, you're running a business too and, mm -hmm. and can use the services of SCORE just like any other business. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, so you got involved with Beverly. Beverly, um, maybe you can uh, share a little bit about how that process got started with Keisha. Yeah, sure. Um, so I started with SCORE just about five years ago. And I think you were one of my very first oh, wow. clients. Oh, so don't be honest. Don't be honest, you are today. Um, and I remember I had to do a bit of research because I was learning too. And you were going to go to a craft fair and do your henna mm -hmm. tattooing. So we had to work out the various permits. Um, now, you were, all, were already in business at that point in time. Yeah. Mm. But it was a question of then how do we grow the business? Where do we focus? And so on. And, and one thing that is a pleasure is, you know, you've seen the work that Keisha does, I'm in awe of it because I am not an artist at all. I don't even show my scribbling to Keisha because I'm sure she would <laughs> frown when she sees it. But where I can hopefully help is to help her think about how to use the best of her time for the artwork, but also then mm -hmm. to find avenues to sell because it is a business. So yeah. that's how we started to get together. And then I think we've met probably about 30 times over the last four years or so. So um, yeah. yeah, we have a regular touch base. That's that's so great. I, I love, you know, what you've been able to do for Keisha and what SCORE does as an organization, because so often when somebody has a passion, whether it's for art or for uh, some sort of business or they, they want to open a restaurant or, you know, whatever it be, you know, often we're, you know, people are really, really good at the thing that they do, you know, the the art, the, you know, the pizza shop, whatever, whatever it is. Um, but actually running a business is, is really tough. Yes. Um, and, and there are so many things that, you know, if you've never done it, if you've never opened your own business or had to run a business, you don't know what there is to deal with. Um, you know, and it's, it's really kind of fly by the seat of your pants if you don't have somebody to guide you or, you know, an organization to guide you. And that's, that's what, um, you know, scores so, so good at. And oh, by the way, it's free. Yes, <laughs> I got that part. It was free because, you know, free. starting That's out, important. you don't really have money and you're just like, no. yeah. where can I get this information from? I'm, mm -hmm. yeah, taking anything I can get and trying to implement it into my business. So, yeah, I was like, free, sign me up. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so really, Keisha, you kind of came into this process. You had some really, really cool art. And I, I, I want to talk about your art and like, um, you know, kind of your style and, and stuff like that. I, and we've seen... Uh, some of it uh, in this interview so far, but um, starting to work with Beverly and Score, what what was that like for you? Um, I mean, you really probably no business background other than you know working in a business for somebody else and maybe seeing bits and pieces of that. But you know, you really probably had to learn a lot from from Score and Beverly, right? Yes, I had to learn a lot, and what I loved about working with Score and Beverly is that. I could ask any question and I not feel stupid about it. And I am one of those people who will ask any question just so I can learn something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I always come to her whenever I have questions. And when we do have our meetups, I, I try to take notes and there's things that I've taken from every meeting that I try to implement every day that I have set, have to set boundaries for myself too, as, as a business owner and, not just an artist, because I uh, like one thing that I take that I've been doing for the last few years since Beverly told me to is to only do my meetings on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So um, it's really been easy to organize my brain in that kind of way, because when I'm working, I'm just only thinking about the art and not about planning throughout the year mm -hmm. and taking big projects and planning around little projects. And that's where a score mentor really helps an artist. Yep. Yep, there's there's no shortage of people uh, pulling for your time, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, setting those boundaries is absolutely crucial. You know, setting aside the, you know, like you said, time to do business stuff and time to do um, the actual work, the 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 artist stuff. So that's that's awesome. Um, so can can you describe your art? I, I, your art is very colorful. Yes. Um, but I know there's there's some themes running through your art. Uh, you know, some some of it we've seen here. Can can you talk about 
your art a little bit and describe it for us as and chris will probably show it in the background yeah um so when when i first started trying to sell my art and and actually paint i feel like i didn't have a style but was what was always was apparent in each of my work um was the colors and how vibrant they were and it wasn't until i did the george floyd mural that i felt like my work had a voice and kind of like stood for something um so then i was obviously more skilled at that time and could do paint more things um, but a lot of my paintings are of women who look like me okay. um and it's sometimes it's un unconsciously like i don't try to do it but a lot of my paintings have features that look like me um but it's just uh something that i don't really see um when i go to modern museums or that we were taught in school i don't really see art that looks okay. like me so i try to paint what isn't there so it can be a part of history that's really cool that's really cool in fact um i know you did and we talked about it pre-show um the organization called patients are waiting yes. um, you did some murals in uh in their facility mm -hmm. uh, and i think chris can probably pull up some pictures there uh can you talk about that about those those are recent you just you just did those last year right yes it's crazy to say last year because it still feels like last year to me <laughs> i still feel like i just finished that mural um yeah so that i started that mural back um at the end of august in the summertime um and it's for a nonprofit. patients are waiting um they help eliminate health disparities in medicine um so in this mural it's featured uh 20 black doctors and scientists throughout history and what? it's dating all the way back to the 1800s some of the photos Oh my gosh, so, look at that. Yeah, so some of these photos, they're very old and like didn't have a lot of detail or very like grainy looking. So like I had to just work with what I saw. Um, so it was, that was a challenge in itself. Um, and each of those squares are four foot by yeah. four foot, by the way. So this mural ended up being about like over a thousand square feet, which is the biggest mural that I've ever done to date. Wow. Um, so it was definitely a process that I learned so much throughout um, I did have an assistant helping me as well, um, but I felt like I could have always had more help. <laughs> I feel like we could do a whole show just talking about these pictures. <laughs> this mural. So how long did this take you to do? Let's start there. Um, I, I'd say like maybe like two and a half, three months total. Oh. And some days when I first started working on this mural, I was like, I'm going to go in and try to do a person a day. That didn't mm -hmm. work because I was <laughs> I was in there like 10 hours a day. And by like the fifth hour, I'm already tired and I'm like, I'm not working as hard as I should be. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to try to come back and work in shorter spurts of time so then I yeah. can get more done when I'm actually there and not just dragging my days along. So once I did that and got into a rhythm, I could bust out the people because I, I had the, my assistant painted the backgrounds. So like the colors that are in the background yeah. of each okay. photo i didn't paint those i designed everything but i didn't paint them i did help um halfway through um so we could catch up but um most of them were painted by the assistant so i could just focus on the people wow and and where did um where did the idea come from is that your idea to do these 20 different people or um... no it was actually dr sharice hamblin's idea so okay. um she every black history month she was posting on her instagram page and social media the history of black doctors and they recently rented out this space down at Southern Market so they could um, have events there. Um, they want to do a Saturday school um, where kids can come. They also have a, another thing that they do with um, college students called Pipeline Dreams, where they have um, high school students into this program, bridging the gap between college and medical school. So they wanted to have this space that could be used by everybody um, in the community. It's unbelievable. I mean, the pictures are just stunning. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And so like the colors and the, you know, the, like the black and white for the people and the colors, like, was that all, is that all you? So yeah, that was all me. So the, a lot of these pictures were old. So some of them weren't in color. So I didn't even know what some of their skin tones or anything looked Ooh. like. So I just had to keep them in black and white. And yeah. some people there, she's actually alive. That woman that was just on there, Alexa Canaday. Um, she, so she, some of these people are still living, um, and some of them have passed, but I think it's awesome. And Dr. Sharice actually knows her. And, um, so it's cool to honor these people in this kind of way. 
that's really really cool and was this um i mean it looks like pictures were taken during the process uh mm -hmm. have you been featured for this artwork in any publications or anything yes like that? um they uh they actually did a I think an article for WJL, um, an interview mm -hmm. that they were on the news for it as well, and then in the paper too. So yeah, it's and we tried to do it at the same time as Extra Give, so it could all be like one mm -hmm. big yeah. event. Um, so yeah, so we're and then we're trying to bring back the tours this this month to for Black History Month as well to yeah. get people, more people in the space and who might have missed the tours back when it was finished. That's so cool. I mean, did you ever imagine? four years ago, three and a half years ago, when, when COVID hit, that you would do a piece like this? Not at all. Not at all. I mean, I've always, like, write notes to myself, like, I'm going to be um, a full-time artist one day and things like that. So it's great to see the memories come up on Facebook when I post things like that. Yeah. And to be actually living it now, it definitely makes me appreciate it more than always thinking of the next thing, as entrepreneurs do. You know, we're always trying to see what's next and what we have yep. to do next. And not be in the moment so that's so cool i mean thank thanks for sharing about that that's I mean, just the, the the artwork is stunning it's, thank <laughs> you I, i'm with you Amazing. i'm with you beverly like i try to draw something i, I <laughs> <laughs> the, the colors are absolutely stunning it's i mean just, there's the journey oh um, yeah. that's the painting that oh, that was the on journey. the t-shirt yeah. Yeah. yeah okay very cool very cool uh beverly i wanted to talk um uh, or ask you as as Keisha's mentor, what are some highlights of, of working together, uh, and what Keisha's been able to accomplish as a result of uh, yeah, sure. mentorship? I, mean, I think it's really tough when you are a solopreneur because you have, you're doing everything. Again, we were talking before the podcast started that yeah. you're doing your social media, doing your accounts, you know, yeah. trying to work out the taxes. So um, some of the things we've tried to work on are. What are the various revenue streams that she has? So the, the henna tattooing and mm. then trying to plan the year around some of these big events. As you would imagine, those murals took you know, three and a half months. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we've got the online sales as well. We have various commissions. We have um, uh, LGBTQ celebrations, all these types of things, Juneteenth. So really, it's around sort of planning the year ahead yes. and then saying, right, if I'm going to be here, and doing mm -hmm. this, let's go back a couple of months. What am I actually going to do the mm -hmm. creative stuff? Yeah. So I think just those the Tuesday, Wednesday thing really worked for you. Yes. Where you can be in your head about the admin that you have to do with the business. Mm -hmm. And then the other days you can be that free creative person. Yes. Um, so I don't help on the creative side at all. <laughs> That's not my forte. Um, but just that organization, things like, you know, um, you may not be the best person to do your own taxes mm -hmm. because you're not a tax expert. No. Yep. So let's. Oh. I don't know if we've lost Keisha and Beverly or not. Are you there? Oh, no. The screen froze. All it right. It froze, yeah. yeah. All right, you're back. We're back. We're back. We're sort of held our breath. And you, oh my gosh! Don't say this, sir, but we also have fun on our calls as well. It's uh, it's always a pleasure to, to connect. Yes. That's great. That's great. Uh, so you've mentioned a number of things. Um, you sell some of your artwork online. Um, mm -hmm. I know there's everything from the actual paintings mm -hmm. to. Um, pins and and other items you want to talk talk about that a little bit Keisha yeah so I actually almost forgot and so I saw him scrolling on my page that I'm actually having a sale this month 15 <laughs> percent off so yeah if you want to buy some art for for Black History Month and support support me there you go you have a code this month um but yeah so I try to put my art on a lots of different types of materials um just so i can have yeah. different price points so everybody is able mm -hmm. to enjoy the art is what i like to say um but yeah so i i have paintings prints pots and sometimes clothing uh t-shirts sometimes bags when i can get a hold of them so i try to paint and all of those things if you have a, an event where you need some henna tattoos, I could be there. 
Okay, so that, that we haven't talked about that yet, but you've mentioned it a couple times. Mm -hmm. And the tattoos, I, I forgive me, I, I kind of know maybe what they are, but like, are you drawing? <laughs> yeah, essentially. Okay. So it's like I'm drawing a, a tattoo. Henna is a plant that is broken down into a powder okay. and then mixed with um, essential oils and it's all organic. So it's mixed to make a paste and the paste is what stains your skin. Yep. Um, it's, and you kind of see these at the beach, I'm sure, if you go to the yeah. beach. Um, but yeah, so I just decided to pick henna up one day because I didn't want to pay for it because I'm an artist and I'm like, I can teach myself how to do this. Mm -hmm. So then I got really good and people started wanting to pay me for it. So then I just added it as a service to my business. That's cool. I, I love that you're just like, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like when I'm with, as an artist and a creative, I feel like if it's something that has to do with making something, I can probably figure out how yeah. to do it. That's, but the business stuff, that's what I call Beverly for. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep, that's cool. Uh, so, um, I mean, again, we, we only have so much time, but um, I know there's other places around town, and we saw it in some of the pictures that we're scrolling. Um, there's other places around town um, outside that you can see your artwork. Do you want mm -hmm. to talk a, a little bit about some of the other places where uh, somebody could view your, your work? Yeah, so I'm actually kind of trying to work on an updated website where I can have a map that shows all of my public work. Oh, that people great are using. Idea. I just don't have it yet, so <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> no, but, that's great. Um, so, like, I've done a, a mural in Benchmark um, program. That's a, a, a gym where kids can go there and work out for free, and they help kids with school, getting jobs. It's a really great place. Um, I, you can see my mural at a Concrete Rose. I did one in their establishment. Um, Spice Kings um, at Penn State Health. I have a painting in there as well. Okay. Um, some of my work that I've done um, in the past is in the YWCA. Um, Rachel's Crapery. Rachel's Crapery. I did the help okay. with the mural in there as well. Um, I, I always forget all the things that I've Your done. Piano one, that's outside the yeah. car park, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, so I did a few of the pianos too, and they do them every year. Um, unfortunately, oh, yeah. they, they change them every year, so they break all the pianos at the end of the year. But oh. I got to keep some pieces of the ones that I made. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I have a lot of work that you can see publicly. That And also, you can purchase my work at SO Arts, which is on 317 North Queen Street. It's okay. an art gallery where um, a bunch of local artists can um rent space and have their own brick and mortar without having to worry about all the th things that go with the brick and mortar that's great that's and they great. And they they don't take any commission you just pay a fee to them and they give you 100 percent commission very nice very nice you know when um do people reach it so i'm like thinking rachel's for example rachel's creepery did did they reach out to you and say hey so, we got this cool idea for our wall and I was actually an assistant artist on that project. So um, it was in conjunction with Friendship Park Gallery. Um, we the, the year before that, we previously worked with um, the artists and adults at through Friendship Park Gallery. Um, they have mental disabilities. So they created all of the art there. And then um, we kind of, another artist pieced all of their paintings together to make the image that's on Rachel's. And then she hired two other artists to help her um, paint the top half because they painted the bottom mm -hmm. um, when they were coming each day. So it was a really great to do a community project in that way. And it helps you get the stuff done so much quicker. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any uh, cool projects you're allowed to talk about coming up? Um, yeah. I like that you put that in there because I have worked about NDAs too. Um, hmm. I have a, a possible mural that I'm, I'm, I have a meeting this week that I'm going to be doing with Lanc Lancaster Country Day School. So I'm excited to work with kids and get back into the schools in that kind of way. Um, as well as um, I have my first meeting for the Public Art Advisory Board, board of Lancaster. I was recently accepted last month to yeah. be on the board. So I'm excited to see what comes from that position and see how I can help all the other artists like me. And don't right. forget the Baldwin as well. Oh, yes. I forgot. How can I forget about that? <laughs> so I did receive a grant from the Lancaster Community Foundation. I'm in the Baldwin cohort of the class of 2025. So oh. my trip is actually coming up in April where I'm traveling to Sedona, Arizona, and then 
Um, in December, I'm also going to Art Basel in Miami for the first time. So that's a big art festival that they do every year. And I haven't gotten a chance to go. I've always seen it since I started trying to sell my stuff on Instagram. So I was like, I need to get there one day. Mm-hmm. And this was the perfect like opportunity. That's cool. And and what is the opportunity going to a place like that? Are you taking some of your artwork with you? And I, I'm i not sure. Um, so I feel like it's so far ahead that I and I've been in connection with other artists on social media who live there and other galleries who put calls out. So I'm hoping maybe I can get a piece down there when I'm there. But if not, I'm all for just going to experiencing it and then going in later years and, and eventually hoping helping that would be the goal to have some work there. That's very cool. That's very cool. So um, upcoming events, like are there places where you're going to be uh, that people can meet you? And I, I think maybe you have a, a, a henna thing coming up and uh, <laughs> the, the Pride Fest maybe, I think. Yeah. So Pride Fest, that's coming up in June uh, this summer. I'm, I'm always, I always do that as well as um, Celebrate Lancaster. You can always catch me there doing henna. Um, those okay, are two yeah. big events that I try to do every year, um, as well as um, this month we're doing the tours for Patients Are Waiting of mm-hmm. the Black Doctor Factory. So if you have a group of people cool. and you want to book a tour, you can come down and see us and I'll, I will give you a tour personally and talk about the process of the mural and what they do as an organization. Um, what else am I doing this year? Other than the Baldwin trips, I'm trying to take this time this year to to create more work to have in my personal inventory, which I haven't been able to do in the last three or four years, if you've been following me, because I've been doing so much everywhere else. So right. I'm trying to make more work that I can um, possibly um, apply to other galleries out of state and have my work travel. So yeah. expanding is my goal. That's cool. Yeah, I was gonna ask like, what what is kind of your, your vision? Like if you're looking five years, 10 years down the road, do you have any, <laughs> like goal you are working towards or? It's always a hard question. I feel like when you ask an artist or entrepreneur because their (laughs) life is always everywhere. So I never really know, but I do write goals every year of things I want to accomplish as an artist. Um, And that's like creating more consistently, getting my work out of state, which I actually have a piece right now that's in North Carolina. So that already happened this year. So I'm excited to see what else happens then. yeah, and just be more intentional with myself and do more things for myself and just grow. I feel like I never really want to put a thing on exactly what I'm going to do, but yep. I'm always doing a lot. You can count on that. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, I, I hope. <laughs> She's going to do the map of where her, her artwork is, mm-hmm. but I think we can say that Keisha's safe, safely on the map herself <laughs> Yeah. in terms of the exposure she's getting with the Public Arts Advisory Board and so on. And, and you know, you did something with Kwanzaa uh, at the end of the last year. Yes, so yeah. lots of things you see. Right? Almost, I, I'm trying to guide her just try and limit how much, because you could be everywhere. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, um, I think you're safely saying you're, you're on the map personally as well. I am, sure? I am. Well, I, I can't wait for the day when, when you have artwork all over the world. And yeah. we can be like, <laughs> She, back in the day, she was on Lancaster Connects. <laughs> that is the goal. I will I promise I will not forget you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, we're, we're, yeah, I mean, there's there's so much we could talk about. Um, I, I guess our time has to wrap up here a little bit. Um, is there anything else, Keisha, that you'd like to to talk about here on the show? I think you covered it pretty well. I mean, like you said, we could we could keep asking questions and be yeah. talking all day, but <laughs> yeah, I. I'm glad that you had me here today and I really enjoyed our conversation. Yeah, me too. Uh, Beverly, I did want to ask, um, you know, kind of wrapping up the the SCORE side of things, um, is there something you'd like everybody to know about SCORE and the opportunity that people have with SCORE? Oh my gosh, there's so much. Um, But we are around 80 strong, 80 mentors strong. Um, Some of us are retired, some of us are not retired. But what we all have is a passion to help our small business um, community here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, we're trying to reach into all areas of the community to help, you know, the diver- wonderful diversity that is Lancaster. Um, we do mentoring and we do education sessions and, you know, we're here to help. Um, so please have a look at our website. I know you got it up on the screen there. Uh, we have a passion to help. And as you said earlier, it's free. 
-hmm. So, you know, a phone call, an email is worth it. And then you'll get, you know, an executive that can really help you make a difference and help you grow your business. So please reach out. Don't hesitate. A phone call is all it takes. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, is that the best way to get started? Uh, either either do that. You can, you can ring us. We're now situated actually in the Lancaster Chamber of yep. Commerce. So we are actually right, re really downtown. Uh, or use the uh, address that's on the screen there, the yeah. org forward yep. slash Lancaster hyphen Lebanon. We're here to help and here to make a difference to our community, which we're we're very proud of. And uh, for us, it's an honor to work with people like Keisha yes. and help her, you know, navigate her path. Yeah, there's a lot of local businesses that you wouldn't think have a score mentor, and they yeah. do. And one thing with Beverly is if she can't answer the question, she will find the answer for me from somebody yeah so yeah. she will find the answer for for whatever question that i have too yeah That's a great point across 80 plus mentors yeah you name it somebody we out of that yeah. 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 yeah yeah that's i mean it's so great that i mean score is a national organization maybe even global um but we have yeah we yeah. have one of the very best chapters right here in Lancaster. Yeah. So it's such a great resource. And Beverly, thank you for all that you do uh, for, for Keisha and everybody else that you mentor and uh, the Lancaster business community in general. Welcome. Pleasure. Very, very cool. Pleasure. And uh, Keisha, thank you for, for sharing um, about your business, your artwork, um, the passion you have for it, um, telling some of your stories. Um, I think we'll, we'll transition into our connection cocktail, maybe get to know you each a little bit better here. <laughs> um, I'm not done with you yet. <laughs> All right. So, um, we asked the tough questions here. We'll, we'll, Keisha, you can go first. Uh, describe your best quality in one word. Oh, see, it's always hard. Cause I'm, I'm not one to like to talk about myself. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. but I, I actually have been working on this in my Baldwin cohort. So I'm going to say determination. Okay. I like that. Yeah. I like my will to always get things done. No matter what I'm going through, I always yep. find a way somehow. Yep. I still don't know how I do all these things that I do, but <laughs> I figure it out. And even if I'm crazy sometimes, but I do it. So yeah, I'm really fond of my determination. That, that's a great word. I mean, those 20 murals inside yeah. patients are waiting. I mean, that I, I can't imagine painting that in years. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah, like, it's society makes you feel like you got to work so fast now. It's like they used to paint yeah. paintings 10 years for one piece back then. So <laughs> it's a whole different world today. Beverly, same question for you. Oh, I was asked that when I was 21, when I left college and applied <laughs> for my first job. And the word I chose then, I would still use now, and it's purposeful. Mm. Oh, so I love that. You have a purpose, yeah. Yeah. Yep. 21, you were yep. bright at 21. I wish I would have <laughs> that at 21 about my purpose. <laughs> All right, and last question, same for each of you. Um, we often talk about, like, favorite things to do in Lancaster, but we're going to narrow it down to favorite thing in winter, since we're, like, pretty much <laughs> smack dab in the middle of winter. Now it's beautiful and sunny outside we had a gorgeous day yesterday on sunday but often it's gray and dreary and cold and so what's your favorite thing to do in winter i'm not gonna lie i kind of hibernate in winter i don't really go out so <laughs> when i have events i do go out but this year i've been liking going to open mic on wednesdays at concrete rose because it gives okay. me a reason to go outside and i get to see a lot of people in the community and people make me read my poetry there and I don't like doing it, but they just always keep asking me. So I just have to do it eventually. So it gets me out of my comfort zone. So I like doing that this winter. That's, That's cool. what I've been liking to do. So, I mean, again, <laughs> you just leave what don't I do, right? What? Yeah, yeah. Well, what don't I do? I don't know. There, what, what was the place called? Concrete Rose? A concrete Rose, yeah. And where is that? That's um, 910 South Duke Street in Lancaster. Okay. And it's open mic. So it's like people doing music, reading poetry. A little bit of everything. Yeah. That's so cool. My my daughter, she's 14. Um, yeah. She writes poetry and she was actually reading some of it to us last night. I'm like, that's that's really good. Like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. So like anybody can come and listen and mm -hmm. participate. Yep. 
Yeah, cool. you'll have to check out their website. They have it um, every Wednesday. Sometimes they do poetry slams here and there, and they, they do a bunch of different family type of events as well. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And Beverly, same question for you. Um, I'm a volunteer at the Fulton Theatre, Fulton Ambassador. I think I saw Joseph five times, <coughs> which is just amazing, really fantastic. Um, and we go again on this Thursday to see the latest production. So I just love doing that. And I really love the kids' shows on Saturday morning mm -hmm. with the you know, great big eyes watching all these things happening <laughs> up on stage. So I have a love of, of the arts and dance and music. Mm -hmm. uh, rubbish yes. at anything to do with painting, but I, but I admire it. We so need people to that. admire it, though. We yeah. need people to admire it as artists. So, yes, yeah. it's a big Yeah, so that's, cool. that's what I love to do. Yeah, Fulton, what, a, what an amazing venue yeah. uh, for the community, to, you know, right, right in downtown Lancaster. Well, yeah. Keisha and Beverly, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for being on. Um, Keisha, We, I mean, this has been great to tell your story. Um, before we we got in, um, you know, invited you as a guest, um, I really didn't know anything about you or your artwork. And it's really, really cool to see what you've been able to do in a short period of time. Yes. And I really uh, hope that, you know, um, the next steps for you are just fantastic. Um, Thank, I, you. You know, Thank you. Wish, that really means a lot. Your, what's that? I said that really means a lot. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Good luck in the, the events you've got coming up here this year. So thank you. Thank you. And good luck to you guys on all of your storytelling. And I'm excited to look more into all the episodes that you've done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give us, give us a look. And, and if you've got a word with the uh, patients are waiting folks. Yes. I will. I, I will put a, a bug in their ear. There you go. I know we've reached out. So. All right, cool. Thank you so much. Have a thank great you. rest of your afternoon. Thanks thank very you. much. Thank you. you. Bye. Yep. Yep. All right. I mean, what a what a great story. Um, and this is <laughs> this is why we do the show. Um, you know, when when Jeff and I got started on this journey, I mean, it's almost four years ago, three years ago, whatever it was. Um, you know, Lancaster Connects, trying to connect the community uh, to each other. Um, you know, um, highlight great people doing great things in this you know, community we call home here at Lancaster. And um, I mean, what a cool, what a cool story uh, that was um, Keisha and the, the, her artwork is just beautiful. And uh, kind of the events of the last few years has inspired uh, the artwork. And, uh, you know, now you can see her artwork all over town. Um, and, and of course, as always, um, during these SCORE shows, a shout out to SCORE and the impact that they have on our local businesses, Gardner's Mattress and more uh, included. So uh, thank you to Beverly. Thank you to Keisha. That was that was great. Uh, don't have much to wrap up the end of the show here. Um, I did want to share a testimonial that we had come in uh, to Gardner's recently. As you can see, a handwritten testimonial there. Yes, people still do get out a pen and a piece of paper. We give these uh, to our customers and they're nice enough to share some words and send it back to us. So I just wanted to share, uh, normally we ask people, um, you know, what do they think about our process to help them match their sleep needs to uh, a mattress that best suits their need. And um, this person said, Victoria said, it's perfect. Uh, I did not know what was best until I went through the process with Drew. Uh, so again, our process to help, you know, everybody is kept up by different things. You know, some people snore, some people have reflux, some people have back pain. Yeah. There's some, some of the testimonials there on the screen. Um, you know, some people, their partners flip and flop and that keeps them up at night. So our goal, our, our job really is to, to flush that out, uh, see, uh, determine what those sleep needs are and then match the person best to those sleep needs. Uh, and we feel we're really, really good at it. Um, the uh, experience was amazing uh, from beginning to end. Uh, they, this Victoria has already been bragging to everybody about the mattress, her mattress, and telling everyone that Gardner's is the place to go. So uh, thank you, Victoria, for the uh, nice handwritten testimonial there. And again, we're Gardner's Mattress and More, uh, the business I co-own with uh, my partner, uh, Jeff Giannacovo. Uh, who's out of town today, but we'll be back next week. Uh, we're on Plaza Boulevard behind Park City Mall, and it is really the um, the the 
our ability to do this show is is a result of uh, Gardner's Mattress and Warren. We're, we're blessed with a great staff and great customers that say some nice things about us, uh, like this testimony here. So thank you, Victoria. Thank you to all of our customers. And uh, thanks to everybody for watching. Uh, we are lined up with guests for the next actually few months. I think we're into April now <laughs> booking guests, which is just awesome. Um, sometimes we're reaching out to businesses and organizations that we think would be great to have uh, featured on the show. And then there are more and more people that are reaching out to us and saying they'd like to be on the show, uh, which is just really, really cool. So um, we, we, uh, we love to tell these stories. And if you'd like to be one of these stories featured on Lancaster Connects, just go to LancasterConnects.com slash guest. Chris has it up there on the screen. Fill out a really simple form. Tell us who you are and why you'd like to be on the show and why it's a story that would be great to have featured on Lancaster Connects. And we'll go through the process to get you on. Um, so again, we're always looking for unique stories. Uh, often we have uh, organizations, nonprofits, charitable organizations, other businesses like us, like Gardner's Mattress and more smaller locally owned businesses. And of course, now an artist. Um, such a cool uh, experience to have Keisha uh, Finney on the show and uh, to talk about uh, her artwork and her journey and, of course, the business that she's been able to build with the help of SCORE uh, right here in Lancaster and, and her mentor, Beverly. So I think that's a wrap for today. Uh, catch us next week, Mondays at 2 o'clock. So we got a great show uh, next week. I won't, won't share who the guest is yet. Uh, but we got a great show, and we look forward to telling another story right here on Lancaster Connects. Have a great day.